What is the one thing that you fear most in life that drives that tickle up your spine? For many years, I was terrified of the ocean. Every summer, my family and I would go down to Wilmington, North Carolina to visit my grandparents who lived right on the beach. I loved going to the beach, hearing the sounds of the waves, yet the dark blue water just scared the crap out of me. <laughs> it was one thing to go fishing on the water or to put my feet in the water, but as soon as I walked far enough into the water where I couldn't see my feet anymore, I was struck with fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of not knowing what was below me. Over the past four years, I've had conversations with over 500 people about aging. I've learned all about how people want to age, where they want to age, and in the manner in which they want to age. Among all of the learnings, the one resounding thing that everyone seemed to agree upon was the resounding fear of dementia, of the silent epidemic, the living death, the raw horror. Fear of not knowing what was going to come, fear of the unknown. Frankly, it's a valid fear, as we have a lack of treatments to tackle this condition, and it seems like everyone and our mothers are getting it. The Alzheimer's Association says that by 2050, they expect that there will be 150 million people in the world living with dementia. For context, that's about half of the population of the United States. Before I go any further, I have to admit to you that I am not a doctor, nor am I a genius or a prodigy who's come up with some magical cure for the illness. What I am, and the reason that I'm here today, is to share with you an alternative perspective on fearing dementia. What if we could use advanced technologies to empower people living with dementia, to continue to live their lives. About four years ago, I was having a conversation with my dad, who's a geriatrician here in Ohio and manages around 10,000 seniors. I was telling him about this cool new technology that Apple had recently invented called iBeacons. iBeacon technology was Apple's version of Bluetooth low energy, and it enabled technology and devices to communicate with each other in low proximity and close to each other. I saw a ton of potential for this technology to change the way devices communicated with each other and to enable a whole bunch of new applications. After I explained this technology to him, he paused for a moment, thinking. Then he said, what if you could use this same technology to help seniors living with dementia who wander and get lost. At the time, I had no direct connection to dementia. Yet I quickly learned through that everyone that I talked to could relate to this dementia wandering thing. I heard stories from people like Susan, who had taken her grandmother out to lunch, and upon returning back from the bathroom, she found that her grandmother wasn't there anymore. Or from John, who had woken up in the middle of the night to find that his spouse wasn't sleeping next to him anymore. Over and over again, these stories continued to pour out of people. The other big thing that I discovered was that all of the technology on the market was big, beige, and ugly. It was institutional, 30 plus years old, built to band-aid the problem and not to empower the individual. So I started my journey into building a wearable device that both functions the way you expect it to and empowers the individual to continue to live their life. Today, our technology is helping many seniors stay safe and healthy. Using its unique real-time indoor and outdoor location tracking without the use of Wi-Fi or cellular technology, Caregivers can check in on loved ones wherever they may be. Our wearable also includes predictive analytics that look at their behaviors to look for early changes in condition, indicative of urinary tract infections or depression. Beyond its features, we've intentionally built the device to look like a watch or a bracelet 
instead of a device of disability. I have learned a lot on my journey of building and commercializing this technology. Yet the most important lesson that I've learned can be summed up for my mentor, Dr. Mary Radofsky, a person living with dementia. She says it best, once human, forever human. Once human, forever human. The biggest thing we tend to forget about people living with this condition is that they are still human. The diagnosis doesn't end your life. Sure, there's an adjusting period and getting back to a new normal, but you can still live your life. It's almost like being paralyzed. Imagine you're hit by a car and you become paralyzed for the rest of your life. You wouldn't stop living your life. You would simply find people to support you and technologies to enable you to get back to a new normal. I believe the same is true for people living with dementia. Technology is so powerful and comes in so many shapes and sizes and formats, many of which we don't even perceive to be technology. The simplest piece of technology is a dog. You know, that living thing that loves you unconditionally, no matter your disposition. Yes, a dog can help people living with dementia in so many ways, from helping to reduce anxiety to providing a friend to talk to. Friends are vital to allowing humans to have a balanced lifestyle. Yet where do people living with dementia go to find friends? Thanks to Zoom video chat technology, people can connect with others from around the world and have face-to-face -face conversations. The Dementia Alliance International was founded by a woman living with dementia to solve for this exact interaction. The organization has grown to about 6,000 members from around the world. Each week, they have a global video chat where hundreds of people can log in to meet others and develop lasting friendships. Around the world, people are using emerging technologies that have been proven successful in other industries to try and use them for this industry. Stuff that we never dreamed possible is now becoming a reality and empowering this population. Computers are learning to see. That's right, what we call it is computer vision. And it's the next evolution of computing. This is about doing the things you have always done while communicating in a way that makes sense to you and letting the power of the computer translate what you mean into real communication. People living with dementia may have a difficult time communicating and may not be able to engage in activities that they used to. Yet, with the power of computer vision in Microsoft's Xbox Connect, people can engage again. By playing games such as tennis or bowling, this technology is empowering people to stay active and social. Now imagine if you could step into a memory. <laughs> It may sound like science fiction, but today we can use virtual reality and sensory augmentation to recreate and reactivate lost memories. One of the most fearful things about dementia is the fear of losing memories. Yet, by using visual sounds and smells, we can recreate these memories of the past. I once saw a woman who was from Poland who had immigrated to the United States after the war broke out. She was placed into a room with TV screens all around her and a street view of a few houses. Her caregiver and her family members sat behind her. The caregiver said, let's fly home. Using Google Maps, the screens transformed from where they were, flew all the way over the ocean to her home back in Poland. The lady lit up, smiling with joy. She stood up from her chair and started pointing out different places. She was reliving her old memory for her and her family to witness. Virtual reality is extremely exciting. It can even transform us and take us to new places that we've never been before. But what about using advanced technologies 
to extend your stay at home. Smart home technology and wearable devices are providing people with this opportunity. When most people think about smart home technologies or sensors, they think about the Nest thermostat or the Ring doorbell. But smart homes for people living with dementia are actually smart. They meet you where you are and grow with you as you need them. Using strategically placed sensors around the home and wearable devices to keep you safe. Living at home is a reality. I want to share an example of my friend Mike. Mike was living with Lewy body dementia and often had hallucinations and episodes of anxiety. Using his smart home sensors that were placed around his home and his wearable device worn, the system was able to sense when he was getting anxious and react to it to calm him down. Turn down the lights, it played some soft music, and it had a pre-recorded voice of his wife that told him everything is okay. Dementia is here to stay. Everyone knows someone. There is no cure, and we don't need to wait for one. What we need is to find people to support us and technologies to enable us to get back to a new normal.